This is Fair Issues on the Mormon Faircast. This week's article is entitled Challenging Issues and Keeping the Faith, Part 14, by Michael R. Ash, read by Stephen Densley Jr. This and other articles by Michael Ash can be found at mormontimes.com. This article was used by permission of the author and Mormon Times. As noted in the previous issue, we play a major role in understanding the Word of God. We may wonder how this should affect our trust of prophets and our willingness to follow their counsel. If Mormon prophets can make fallible pronouncements, can we pick and choose which of their words we should follow? And why should we follow their counsel if they might be wrong? The truth is, we already pick and choose when we follow the words of the prophets. We also pick and choose the counsel we follow from the scriptures, our boss, the law, health professionals, our spouses, etc. Because we're not perfect and not robots, it always comes down to personal choice. We have our agency to follow the prophet, go to church, avoid pornography, obey the speed limits, come to work on time, mow our lawn, etc. Sometimes there are no apparent consequences for ignoring rules, counsels, or commandments, while other times the consequences are nearly immediate. But what if the prophet is wrong? What are the consequences of following a prophet's erroneous opinion? The same question might apply to those with stewardship over smaller spheres of responsibility. What are the consequences of following the advice of a righteous wife, mother, husband, or father? If we are living lives that allow the Holy Spirit to work within us and speak to us, if we are seeking God's guidance through our actions, thoughts, and desires, if we pray always, accept Christ's atonement into our lives, and conform to His, are we going to make mistakes? Most certainly. But what kind of mistakes? Will we make errors that have negative eternal consequences? Not likely. We must remember that, despite the portrait painted by some critics, the prophets and leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are servants of the Lord, and by extension, servants of His children. They don't do it for power or pride. They serve out of love and Christ-like charity. As many lay members, they live lives that are harmonious with the Spirit of God and generally have extensive experience behind their thoughts and actions. They also have the support of their quorum, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Quorums and counselors assure that God's will is revealed. This doesn't mean that a quorum is infallible, but spiritual strength is increased in the unity of a righteous quorum. That's why, for the most part, LDS doctrine is proclaimed by the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve as a unified body of God's prophets. Elder Boyd K. Packer said that the men and women who are called to lead the church are ordinary people who seek inspiration in the same manner as any other member. He said, Some are disposed to find fault with us. Surely that is easy for them to do, but they do not examine us more searchingly than we examine ourselves. A call to lead is not an exemption from the challenges of life. We are sorry for our inadequacies, sorry that we are not better than we are. But this we know. There are counsels and counselors and quorums to counterbalance the foibles and frailties of man. The Lord organized His church to provide for mortal men to work as mortal men, and yet He assured that the spirit of revelation would guide in all that we do in His name. When some leaders have said that the prophets will not lead God's people astray, that statement is not a claim of infallibility, but instead it is a promise that God will not allow modern-day prophets to lead His people away from Christ. A member and prophet may disagree on certain historical, scientific, or even gospel issues, but we can be assured that none of those issues of themselves should have any impact on our personal journey home to the Father. First, we should attempt to gain a testimony of Jesus Christ. Then we should seek a testimony of the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith, and our current prophet. Lastly, we should seek our own testimonies on gospel issues. If our testimony on a specific issue isn't firm, following those who are called of God, as confirmed by our own testimony, is probably a wise choice. If we know that the prophet is God's prophet, then we can rest assured that while he may make mistakes or have erroneous opinions, 
He will not teach us or counsel us in ways that would separate us from God. What are the consequences of not following the prophet? And what happens to those who privately or publicly disagree with the prophets or official church doctrines? This and more to come in later issues. If you like this podcast, you can help promote it by rating it in iTunes and by writing a review. Post a link on your blog and Facebook page and tell your friends about us. Questions or comments about this episode can be sent to podcast at fairlds.org or join the conversation at fairblog.org. Michael R. Ash is the author of the book Shaken Faith Syndrome, Strengthening One's Testimony in the Face of Criticism and Doubt, as well as the book Of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Both books are available for purchase online through the Fair Bookstore. Music for this episode was provided courtesy of Lawrence Green. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or of FAIR.